So having spoken a bit about Angular.js and how it works, let's have a look at an example. And I've got the code open to start with just to show that the code is small. Uh, so this is the full HTML of the example I'm going to show you. And as you can see, there's only 32 lines of it. If I go across the JavaScript that this uses, well, it's a bit longer, but in, it's only 97 lines, including all of the comments and all of the white space. So this is going to be a really small example, but let's see what it does. What it's going to do is I'm going to type in the username of someone on GitHub. And when I click lookup, it's going to make a call to GitHub's public API for their public profile data. Uh, we're not going to get anything secret here, only stuff that GitHub publishes to people who aren't logged in. And uh, this is then going to show underneath, it's going to show the ID of the user on GitHub as well as the JSON data that the API returns. So let's type my username in first of all. And let's click look up. It goes fetching and comes back with the user ID and here's some JSON data. Let's now try that for a different user, uh, username. Let's think up some random ones. So maybe we'll choose uh, Fred. Uh, I'm guessing there's probably a username called Fred on there. Let's look that up. And apparently that's who Fred is. And let's go for, let's try Barney maybe. And we look that up, fetching, and there's the user ID and the JSON data for Barney. Uh, the code for this is all up on GitHub, HTTPS, github.com, wbillingsley, angular.js.demo1. And the uh, because GitHub also hosts sites. Um, you can try it out at wbillingsley.github.io slash angularjs-demo1. So let's have a look at the code, what it's doing. Uh, let's start off with the HTML because that's uh, pretty simple. So if we look at the HTML, up the top uh, we have a script tag loading angular.js from a content delivery network. So that just pulls in angular.js's scripts from on the web. We've then got the code for our app, uh, which is source equals directives.js, and that's this file. Um, and then we have a link to pull in bootstrap, and that again is coming from a content delivery network on the web. And then this part all the way down here is just HTML that appears on the page and the only kind of other uh, interesting part of the HTML is these three lines here. So here we have div ng app equals github profiles. ng app, this is an angular.js directive, this is a tag directive, it's telling angular.js to do something and what it's telling it to do in this case is it's saying within these tags you should look for directives that are declared on the module GitHub profiles. So somewhere in my code, I'll have some code that says angular.module GitHub profiles dot directive. And the con those directives are the ones that we're going to invoke. In here, we have a tag that HTML doesn't know, except that we're going to teach HTML this directive, uh, profile fetcher. And so that is going to be um, one of the directives and so for a directive you can kind of think widget or component uh, these are how we talk about ui elements at a higher level than paragraph tags and divs and heading tags uh, in html when we're using angular.js so let's dive across into the javascript code because that's where uh, all of this stuff happens so first of all at the top we'll see that sure enough i do define that there's going to be a module github profiles angular.module of github profiles and i have an array after it and that's the other modules that this module depends on which in this case is none so it's just an empty array the next section in the other video i talked about how um, very often we d in in javascript there's kind of a convention of declaring your modules code inside an anonymous function so that you don't get namespace clashes between different bits of your code so you can control when your variables are published so we have an anonymous function up there and uh, that closes down here 
typically in a bigger program each of these sections would be their, in their own JavaScript file and there would be some part of the build process that would concatenate them together and minify them, shrink them, take all the comments out, shrink the variable name so it takes up less bytes before it's delivered up to the client. Um, you can also, um, most browsers can accept zipped content uh, from servers, uh, in which case you'd sort of wonder, well, maybe it's not worth actually minifying that uh, if if you can zip it. Uh, but nonetheless, you'd probably want to combine it all into a single file when it gets delivered to the browser, so it's fewer requests and is quicker. Uh, so inside this function, we're going to do some stuff. And so the first thing that it does is declare the controller. And um, in the array, these first two uh, these first two elements in the array are naming dependencies that angular.js is going to pass into the function. So it's names dollar scope and it names the dollar HTTP service. And so in our controller function, angular.js is going to pass dollar scope and dollar HTTP. And here we declare some things on the scope object, which, uh, as I mentioned in the other video, this dollar scope object that is available to the template and things that appear in squealy brackets and curly braces inside the inside the template such as here status that is going to be dollar scope dot status and so initially that's set to null uh, null in JavaScript is falsy if you do an if on something that's null you get false and so to start with ng if equals status equals dollar scope dot status dollar scope dot scape status is null that's false and so this wouldn't appear to begin with um, similarly uh, we declare submit to be a function and down in the template we say ng click is submit so when you click the button it's going to call dollar scope dot submit which is this function here and in this function well, it's going to set the profile to be null, which means because this has an ng show is profile dollar scope dot profile, so dollar scope dot profile will become null, which is falsy, so it won't show it. So it will set that to be hidden while we're making the request, and then it will set scope dot status to be fetching, and so now scope dot status is a string, and that's truthy, so the ng if on status dollar scope dot status well it's a string it's now truthy so this does show it appears in the HTML and we will see dollar scope dot status which is fetching dot 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 appear within the div while the request takes place and uh, then we initiate our request we go dollar HTTP dot get of, of the URL that we work out so API dot github dot com slash users slash w billingsley or slash Fred or slash whichever user it is we're looking up uh, and that returns immediately with a promise uh, and the promise has a then method so .get of url then says make a request to this url and i'm going to pass you some functions to do if that request succeeds and if that request fails and the request if it succeeds and we get back uh, we'll get back a result then, well, we can set dollar scope dot status to null now. We don't need the fetching message anymore, so that'll disappear. And we'll set the profile to be just the data that comes back off the request. And so down here, now dollar scope dot profile uh, has an object in it that becomes truthy. That's going to show, and so our profile details um, component uh, directive that we are going to declare below that will appear and it will have our profile data in it. If there's an error, well, what we want to do then is we're just going to set the status message to be the data that came back in the error. And uh, and so hopefully we will get the status thing will appear and it will just tell us what happened. So that's our first directive, but you'll see that this directive, its template, it invokes the profile details uh, directive and the profile details directive is declared down here inside another of these anonymous, anonymous functions so uh, if you're developing a larger project this might be in another JavaScript file. Angular.module github profiles declare the directive profile details 
and this one where we said it's an element again and here we have the the thing that declares that this directive is going to have its own dollar scope it's not just going to use the parents dollar scope it's going to have its own dollar scope object but on that dollar scope object we've asked angular.js to set dollar scope dot profile to be bound to and we look inside the tag name for uh, sorry inside the element for the tag whose name is profile the tag whose name is profile and so it's going to be bound to from the parent scope the value dollar scope dot profile so this is actually just going to bind dollar scope dot profile in this component to be bound to the value of dollar scope dot profile in this component and so up here we said dollar scope dot profile is result dot data and so that means that down here dollar scope dot profile is going to be result dot data and so you'll notice I haven't even declared a controller for this because well dollar scope dot profile is going to be um, the data that comes back my controller is not going to have to do anything I'm not going to declare one so in the template down here uh, this time we just have some low level tags so we've said that what we're going to show for this profile paragraph label user ID span and we're going to uh, in insert the profile ID in that and so if we look over here there's the label and there's the profile ID being inserted in and if we go back to here um, then a heading JSON data and a paragraph containing the profile but remember profile there is a JavaScript object so we get a paragraph with profile a JavaScript object how how does that get written out well it gets written out as a JSON string and so that is all there is to our little demonstration app and so whenever I type a new username uh, in here and click look, uh, click look up it calls scope.submit and it does the behavior that I defined up here in this directive that does this get and changes the values on the scope and uh, angular.js handles updating the um, updating the page as my data changes in the way that it's bound and as I mentioned in the other video the way that it does this is as it goes through uh, its tree it sees all the scopes and it sees the data that's on them and it does dirty checking okay this thing's been bound to something that's in the HTML has it changed since we rendered the HTML last oh this one has we need to update it that one hasn't okay move on to the next um, that dirty checking can take a little bit of time and so react.js from Facebook uh, came up with a, a different method methodology which is that they generate the entire HTML that um, that the application should produce uh, this tick in the background not actually on the on not do, not on the DOM not live in the browser but they generate in the background okay now I've got the HTML and it does a diff uh, to what's in the document object model showing in the browser and then calculates what changes it needs to make to make the browser match what it generated 